So yesterday was actually an exciting, or last night, was actually an exciting uh, um, evening. I... I got to finally make the hood skins and um, I was looking forward to that because I wanted to see what the, the hood looked like on the machine so I get a general idea of uh, the overall shape of this thing when it's done. So my wife works at a sheet metal plumbing HVAC place and they have bending brakes and shears and bead rollers and seam makers and stuff like that for making duct work. And um, so she got permission for me to come in because I have prior sheet metal shop experience. I worked in a sheet metal shop for a couple of years. Um, <clears throat> so I have some experience with that. I know how to use the equipment and um, so she got permission for me to come in and shear and bend up the skins for the hood on the Klondiker. <clears throat> so I knocked out the job in about 30 minutes. It took a little while to remember how to, how to do stuff but I figured it out. Knocked it out in about 30 minutes and immediately came home after that and came out in the shop here and started uh, mounting them up and riveting them on. And yeah, I pretty much have the hood attached. I got some, some little trim pieces and stuff I have to make um, to fill in some gaps and some corners and stuff that, didn't, uh, that I didn't measure quite right and stuff like that. But um, for the most part, it's on there and it's riveted on. I kind of felt like an aircraft mechanic last night because I was putting in all these rivets. But that is the best way to, to attach cladding to something, you know. That's why aircraft manufacturers use it. It's a strong, secure hold. Um, and it's not a big, uh, cumbersome bolt or anything like that. So uh, I'll give you a look at what she looks like now. And um, I haven't painted it yet, of course. <clears throat> Sacrificial road signs. But yeah, this is, uh, this is how she's looking right at the moment. So I have to make some corner pieces that fit in here. Down below here, I have a gap here that's going to possibly suck in a bunch of snow. So I think I'm going to make something for that. Um, over here, I obviously way overcompensated for the brake, but I, uh, or the gearbox, but I uh, had to notch out the rail right here for the gearbox to fit in. So this is where I made the frame for the hood. So I'll probably make a little patch piece that'll fit in here to tighten this up a little bit more. <clears throat> but it's all secure with little tiny rivets all the way along here. And it uh, opens and closes. I made it out of aluminum, so it's real lightweight. Uh, you know, now I'm at the point trying not to make this thing as heavy as a battleship. I think what I'm going to do right here, see how I got this gap? I was going to finish this down. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, leave this open <clears throat> so I can get some airflow. I, I don't know. I'm kind of on the fence on that because um, I might do something on the sides instead. Because as this thing's plowing through deep snow, um, it's going to be scooping a bunch of snow in the front there, and I don't want that snow all piling up inside the hood. So I think I might 
put some scoops or something on the side or or uh, on the top or something. I might even go on this this front uh, first slope here. The headlight's gonna mount right here, so I might put a grill or something in right here. Um, with a screen on it to let air in uh, to keep that engine cool. Because um, it's going to be working. But overall, I'm happy with the way it turned out. I was worried I'm not good at measuring. And uh, I was worried I got my measurements wrong and whatnot. But everything seemed to line up the way it should. I wanted the actually it didn't uh speaking of measuring i wanted this top hood which is one solid piece that i bent okay i wanted this i, I put an edge on here you can see it right here i wanted that to overlap this for a nice finished look but when i measured it i measured the width of the frame right here the black and i didn't add in a quarter inch for overlap on the side pieces, side panels. So I had to tuck it on the inside instead of the outside. So now what I'm probably going to do is when I go to the home center, I'm gonna buy some aluminum angle iron. <clears throat> That's not even a word, aluminum angle iron. How can it be aluminum and iron? Duh. Well, it's still morning. I haven't had my obligatory eight cups of coffee yet, so I'm a little off. But anyway, uh, I'll buy some aluminum angle. <clears throat> and then I'll make little trim pieces that go over the edge of that. Just to kind of dress it up a little bit. Give it a nice finished look. So, um, Yeah, and then, uh, then it'll get a coat of paint once I... I, I've got to do something with the, this side I wouldn't have to do so much with um, as far as scuffing up that coating. I think that's just a big sticker on there. I'm not even sure. No, that might be paint. I don't know how do they make these road signs. But this sign was a sign that somebody had commandeered uh, took a road sign and then they had a sign made by a sign company. So these are actually vinyl letters that are on here. And if I spray over the top of that, you're gonna be able to see all of this through the paint. So I'm gonna go at that with a DA sander with like 80 grit and uh, see if I can't knock all that off of there before I paint it. Mm. But yeah. Um, I'm quite happy with the way it's turning out. Just a few little fiddly things now, and and then I can lay some paint on it, let that dry, and my uh, decals, my side decals, should be here, uh, should be done next week. And then I can put the logo on there, and um, the hood will be done. And like I said, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a rack for the top. Let me turn this. There you go. So up here, this is all wasted space, right? Now granted, the machine is top heavy, but with the addition of my skis, I took away the feeling of tippiness. Now it's, it's stable. And these are right now sitting on the floor. So this machine, I cannot tip it on its side. So all my top heaviness issues have gone away. All my nose heavy issues have gone away just with the addition of stabilizer skis off to the side. So that was critical and I'm so glad I bought these. Tim gave me shit, um, you know, oh yeah, you know, what do you need skis for? It's going to weigh a thousand pounds, blah, blah, blah. Well, they're plastic, they're lightweight, um, and, I'm, and they're powder skis, so they're real wide. So I'm glad I did it because it just gives the machine a whole new feeling of stability. 
If these were not on here, I literally think I could take the handlebars and go like this and, and it would fall right on its side. So this, this is huge physics wise. But up here, wasted space, right? So the plan is, I'm gonna get a mount, a bow hunting mount, or a, a rifle, you can buy them at sporting goods stores, um, to hold your gun on the rack of an ATV. So I'm going to get one of those kits. I'm going to mount that on here because I have good solid steel running across here and here. I'm going to mount that here and the ice auger will sit right here. More than likely just like this. Um, then this space right here, I'm going to build another little rack like this in the back and put it up here about so high and that will be just a little basket that I can lay a backpack with a strap to carry drinks, food, smokes, whatever else can go right in this space here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get the machine to carry as much equipment as possible versus the toboggan that I'm dragging. Um, the reason for that is if I want to go fishing with two people, I would like to be able to get both people in this little toboggan. That toboggan is four foot long by two foot wide. So I would like to have two people in this sled. And if I do that, I cannot have equipment in the sled. So the sled automatically becomes the dog sled sled that hauls the people. Although in that case, the people stand off the back and then the sled hauls the equipment. In this case, the sled's going to haul the people and the equipment's going to be off the back. Totally ass backwards, right? Well, that's how it's going to be. So on the back of here, since I have a TIG welder and I can now weld aluminum, I'm going to make an aluminum rack that comes off the back of the sled that will allow me to hang buckets off the back of the sled, about that high. Okay? So that will allow me to carry one bucket in the basket, all right, <clears throat> like so. Um, I might be able to fit my little fish finder down in that space in the front. And then off the back of here, I'll, the toboggan, I'll be able to carry another pail like this. Two pails side by side. So one of those pails will be another pail of rods and tip-ups or whatever. And then the other pail will be the minnow bucket. Because I have learned when using machinery on the ice to transport oneself. If you have a minnow bucket anywhere on that, in that toboggan, it will do two things. All the water will slosh out of the bucket and end up on, inside the, the sled, or the minnow bucket will bounce, tip over, and then you'll have nothing but water and minnows in the bottom of the sled. So I wanna hang the buckets off the back of that toboggan so that all the sloshing happens in the snow. Then when I get out to the lake and I punch that first hole, the very first thing I do is refill the bucket with that cold lake water and I scoop a, uh, one scoop of slush into the, into the minnow pail. All the minnows get shocked, okay? So they're all floating around and lethargic and all for a little while. And then they get acclimated to that colder water because the water's colder than what the water is you got from the bait shop. That's why your minnows usually die um, when you put them on a hook and you put them in the water and you come and check them 30 minutes later and they're just dead. You shock them. So if you acclimate your minnows by mixing in some of your lake water that you just drilled a hole and got and throwing one scoop of slush into the bucket, the fish will acclimate slowly and they'll be useless for... Pfft, 
you know, 20 minutes or so while they're kind of like going blah, 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 trying to figure out what's going on. But then they'll come around and you'll have lively minnows that are acclimated to the lake temperature water and you'll be good to go. So hanging the pail off the back of the toboggan allows the water that's going to inevitably slosh out of the pail because you're bouncing and jerking around. That just falls in the snow. It's not making a big slippery mess in your toboggan. And um, gets the equipment out of, the, out of that little toboggan. So I can then mount a seat at the very back of that toboggan, a chair, um, for the passenger to sit in while I stand in front of them and run the machine. Granted, there's a high probable chance that they will have to sniff my farts. Because my butt's like right in their face. But that's just the hazards of, uh, of uh, I'm at a loss for words. I shouldn't really have been wandering off on that thread, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, that, that's a plan. Um, since I try to do everything to the nines, uh, I want my passenger to be comfortable, as comfortable as they can be. So the seat that I'm mounting or making for the toboggan is actually going to have a suspension in it. It's going to be a springy seat. So as we're bouncing along the trail, that person is not getting their hemorrhoids packed up into their throat. And so that back chair will be removable and it will be um, a suspension seat. Not only that, when you get to the spot that you want to fish, if you drive the machine, you drill a hole and you drive the machine over the hole and drag the toboggan over the hole and then you stop now you can sit in that nice comfy suspension seat, swivel around and hang your feet off the back. Wait a minute, I got a rack on there. So you'd have to do it sideways. Sideways off of the toboggan, and now you can sit in the chair and fish. So that's one less thing you gotta bring with you is a folding chair or a stool or something like that. So I'm trying to keep the amount of equipment that I have to bring down to a minimum by utilizing the machine as part of the ice fishing process. If I had my way, and I was really, I don't know, lazy or whatever you want to call it, off the jack shaft on the snowmobile, no, I can't do that either. Forget it. I'm not even going to talk about it because it won't work. All right, I'll tell you what my idea was. Hydraulic pump and hydraulic powered auger off the front of the machine so that you just sit in the machine and push a button and it drills a hole and picks it up drive to the next spot drills a hole pick. no forget it um <clears throat> so yeah that's this, this is kind of the setup you're looking at it right here um small rack on the top headlight will be uh will be right here okay I'll put some air vents in here. I gotta figure out, I don't wanna just make goofy looking air vents. You know, I, I, if I had a plasma cutter, let me tell you something. If I had a plasma cutter, I'd come up with some sort of really cool design for that front portion there, and I'd plasma that in. <clears throat> you know, like eyeballs or a snarly face or something like that, and then put screen behind it. You know, but I don't have a plasma cutter yet. <clears throat> the wife is pricing them. So here's fingers crossed. So that's where I'm at now. The goal today, first thing I got to do is I got to run to the hardware store or the home center. Because keep in mind, like I said, if you decide to use old bed frames to make your frame, it's good, strong angle iron, right? But it's strong because it's hardened. So when you try to drill a hole through that, man, do you lunch a drill bit quick. And that's exactly what happened. I found a, in my big tin of drill bits, I found a drill bit, the right size, and that thing drilled all of those holes for all of those rivets that you see. It was doing a wonderful job. It wasn't getting dull. And then I got the bit jammed. 
right here. Drilling through hardened steel and it snapped the drill bit and I lost one of my favorite drill bits. Da, 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 da. And, and drill bits are not cheap. Um, well, there is cheap ones, but what you want is cobalt so that you can drill through stainless and you can drill through hardened steel. And that was one of my cobalt bits. I snapped it. So that'll be about four bucks. So the plan today is to go and get some more drill bits. Uh, I need some more electrical stuff too, terminals and things. And I need to, um, I mean, I have a feeling I'll be making a couple of trips because I don't feel like making a list and I don't feel like sitting and thinking, hmm, what, what, what do I need on the list? So, but I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get everything per, pertaining to this hood fabbed up and ready to go. And then I'm gonna try to scuff that material off of the thing. And I, my, my hope today, by the end of the day, is to have color on here, to have paint on here. That's my goal. Not only that, wait, I'll just make another video.